Okay, this thing's really been through it. I chopped uh, chopped up a bunch of pine and maple with it. Uh, I chopped through a log. I don't know if it was a hardwood log, but it was definitely hardwood. So whatever it was, I mean, I have pictures of that in one of my previous uh, pre-review testing things. I actually took this thing up to my uh, up to the rafters of my shop, jammed it in the floor between my rafters and my. Uh, the second story of my shop or the storage area I have up there anyway and hung on it from a ladder until I didn't trust it anymore I put about two-thirds of my weight on it before I was afraid it would give way and have me uh, uh, plummet uh, several feet down onto a concrete floor so I didn't completely hang on it but I put a significant amount of weight on it and now this is it we'll see what the edge can do being plunged into the ground Moved around on rocks in there, whatever's in there. Hear that grinding? Yeah. Now, time for a review. Well, in the world of knives, I fully believe that you get what you pay for. But I do believe that people are confused as to what that is. Now when I buy a knife, I'm paying for cutting power. In fixed blade knives, that power is compromised of size and shape, weight and sharpness. I want to use the knife to cut stuff. That power is a very, very small percentage of the overall cost of the knife. And the remainder is made up of stuff like steel type, handle materials, sheaths, carry options, and finally the name that's stamped onto the blade itself. Now the truth is that many prominent knife companies are purchasing knives from the Chinese factories that everybody loves to hate and it's stamping them with their own logo. After the knife says Buck instead of San Rem Yu on the blade, it's marked up about 300 percent. And people are eating it up. I mean it blows me away. Now look, I'm not saying there isn't total junk out there because I believe there is. You gotta be a little discerning when you make any purchase. But the internet's made that process much easier in the past 10 years or so. In the world of large fixed blade knives, I sincerely believe folks are confused about getting what they pay for. I, people, I, I think people really do believe that one name brand is better than the other. Now this might be true in the world of the purest collector, but in my world, the world of the user, it just doesn't really hold out. I mean, the fact is, when you pay more, you do get a nicer knife. But where the metal meets the meat, if it's approximately the same size, shape, weight, and sharpness, the cutting power is going to be about the same, and the name on the side doesn't mean anything for the weekend user. About the only real difference is that you may have to sharpen a cheaper knife blade more often, but depending on the user, that might not even be the case. So keep your mind open during this review and you might save yourself a couple bucks. Well, we had a little bit of a reprieve from the snow, uh, but nature reminded us that it's still February, so yeah, here we are. Hey, look, uh, I did a lot of testing on these things, and I don't usually put out what I do to test the knife before I just go ahead and give it a review, because you know, if you want to watch somebody chop a tree down or do stuff like that, you know, you can go watch. There's plenty of guys that'll do that. You can watch them for 10 minutes you know, chop down, chop down stuff, and I like doing, I like watching it, but it's not really my style, so I, I went ahead and put that out there before I did this review, because I wanted people to understand that I actually did use these things, they have such a bad reputation, that I wanted to make sure that, that everybody uh, that knew that I did put them through their paces before I just went, said, went ahead and said, hey, go ahead and buy them. Uh, the truth is, there's nothing wrong with these blades. Uh, the 440 steel held up fine. Uh, I plunged it into the ground several times and of course the, the edge degraded to the point of non-use which would have done on anything. I mean you put a bussy through that and it's gonna you know it's gonna be a problem. No steel will, will hold up to that. But uh, with just a little bit of time, a couple minutes, I was able to put back a workable edge on the Trailmaster knockoff here. It certainly wasn't shaving sharp and it wouldn't have cut you without some you know pressure. Uh, but if you're just looking for a forts and fires knife and you you dull it to the point where you can't use it anymore you know with minimal effort you can get back a service edge on the thing so that was that was impressive both knives stayed tight 
the Trailmaster got used, of course, more than the rough use knife. You can see there's some uh, the 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 finish is nicer still on the rough use knife because uh, <laughs> I didn't use it as much. But the steel's the same, so there you go. And that's primarily what we're focusing on here. Um, yeah, look, there is nothing wrong with these MTech fixed blades. If you're looking for a if you're a weekend warrior and you're looking for a Trailmaster, but you don't want to drop the hundred and X dollars, whatever they cost, and you got 20 to spare. Good grief, man! There's no reason that you shouldn't go ahead and get this. It's uh, it's fine. It works good. Okay, here are the sheaths for the rough use, uh, the rough use Bowie here in the Trailmaster knockoff. This is the Trailmaster knockoff sheath. I mean, really, look at that. It's thin nylon. I don't even think there's an insert in this one. And then it's got a uh, Velcro holder. And over here is the for the rough use style Bowie. Uh, this actually has a button. I have it turned in reverse here, so I can slide it in and out for review purposes without uh, having to deal with the flap. But I think there's actually an insert in there. You might not be able to see it, but this too is very very thin. So the truth is, these sheaths are more or less just part of the packaging that the knives come in. It's not too bad. Uh, when it comes to actually protecting, say, your backpack from being cut. I'll try to do this one-handed here. You can slip the knife in like that. A lot of guys don't even carry something like this on their hip. They just slide it into their Alice pack or whatever they're carrying, and uh, this will prevent your uh, your pack from being cut. So, you know, as far as far uh, as far as that goes, they'll do the job. But the sheaths certainly aren't anything to get wild about. So there you go. Okay, I thrashed the heck out of these things. I cleaned pine branches, chopped several logs of maple and other wood, I batoned firewood, I hung most of my body weight from the Trailmaster ripoff, I dug the tip of both blades into live trees and I violently twisted the knife to try and bust the tips, and I couldn't. I plunged one into the earth and ground it against the subgrade to test the finish, toughness, and build quality. I mean, shoot! I even froze the Trailmaster in my freezer, then I beat it violently from the edge, the spine, and the sides on a pile of firewood to try and chip or break it, and it survived. I did everything short of a deliberate destruction test, and both knives passed with flying colors. The edge on the Trailmaster was tested the hardest, and it held up solidly to everything I threw at it until I intentionally destroyed it by grinding it into rocky subgrade. Now listen, I own the Cold Steel SRK the Recon Tanto, and the Peacekeeper, all in carbon-5 steel. I have Becker offerings, Ontario offerings, Buck offerings, and listen, the list goes on. I gotta come to the conclusion that these M-Tech knives are just as tough, and they are ready to rock. I can't speak uh, about the, the uh, folders. I, I haven't have very much uh, experience with them, but when it comes to the large fixed blades, these things have it where it counts. All right, just some quick comments on the overall build. Both knives are built with economy in mind, and the sheaths are what they are. They'll last a very long time in a pack, but not on the hip. The handle material is made cheaply on the rough use Bowie, but the Trailmaster handle feels very much like the handles on the real cold steel knives, and it held up to what might be called abuse. Further, the 440 blade steel is very tough, and it bended and flexed and withstood a severe beating on the edge, sides, and spine after an approximately zero degree freeze. The edge retention was very acceptable, but I believe short of the 1095 carbon steel that's typically used on uh, outdoor survival knives. Now that's subjective, of course, and it's pretty close to the same. However, I'll take toughness, stainless properties, toughness rather in stainless properties over edge retention on a survival knife any day of the week. I don't want it to bust. I'd rather have it dull than break. And I know 1095, or I've heard anyway and I've seen, 1095 has uh, the propens propensity, I guess is the right word, to uh, possibly bust when it gets cold or chip. You know, I've seen it happen. It, th these knives have cheap steel, cheap handles, cheap sheaths, but a high quality build with a price point that anybody can do. Look, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, check out the videos of my kids and me using these things and see for yourself. The MTech offerings held up at least to the abuse that the average guy's gonna dish out, and arguably more. 
affordability, combined with cutting power, make these things a must-buy for anyone that might be considering a fixed blade forts and fires knife. MTech has a new reputation with me. Don't believe what you're reading on the forums. I mean, they're so cheap. Go ahead and buy one, test it, and see for yourself. Hey, this is YHC Kelly. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll try and keep them coming.